Hello and welcome to OOP345ZAA. My name is Bardak. Okay? Um, uh, when I speak in English, I pronounce my name incorrectly. So I say my name is Fardad, but in reality, my name is Fardot. Okay, so Fardot is the correct origin pronunciation of it. But Fardad will do too if your dad is far and you're lucky. So Fardad. Uh, please don't call me Mr. Suleiman, professor, stuff like that. I don't have a PhD, so anyway. So that's that. Um, I'll start with, I'll start with this. In my class, you have to be exact, okay? Be precise, you must have OC. When I say in my course, it's the wrong thing to say. In, in, in the science that you're in, in computer science, you need to do that. If you're not exact, airplanes go down, OK? Banks get, get bankrupt. And uh, bad things happen in hospitals. People die. It's not a joke, OK? So you have to be precise. So we cannot, when I give you a series of instructions, Hello, how are you? How about you? Very good, thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. You're here. So, yeah, so uh, we have to be exact and we have to be precise and we have to make sure that all the things we do follow the, the needs of our application, whatever the application may be. Okay? Um, OP245 is a bit different than OP244. OP244, you are learning object oriented programming using C. In OP345, you are learning C. Okay? Uh, we're going to teach you uh, to write your program in a way that is going to be divided into five programs and run at the same time instead of one program running down and then how these programs talk with each other so you can do things faster and this program I'm going to give you uh, an array with five billion integers and I'm going to say your uh, computer has 16 CPUs uh, write a program that finds the uh, smallest number in there in the minimum amount of time that you can do. So it's not just uh, finding the number, it's finding the number in a more efficient way. Or I'm going to give you the way, the algorithm that actually finds the number and then tell you I have 16 CPUs, now make it efficient. Things like that. So that's what uh, this subject is about. We are learning C++ uh, more deep. And, uh, yeah, that's that. So uh, be aware of it. Uh, this is not something that you should be doing. You reduce the number of workshops and, and projects and assignments dramatically. You only have four quizzes throughout the semester. You only have four workshops throughout the semester. No project. That's all it is. Okay? So it's much smaller thing to do. All right? Uh, all your work is proctored other than the workshop. So you have one workshop that you're doing at home on your own. That's 20% of the mark. The rest of the stuff are done over here and in my presence. Therefore, uh, all the problems with uh, cheating and plagiarism goes out the window. Uh, and we decided to preach you guys telling you these are the workshops. I recommend you do it yourself. If you don't do it yourself, 
you can't do the test. And the tests are 70% of the mark of the subject. So you can choose to learn by practicing. You cannot procrastinate in the subject. You have to just study from day one. Okay? That was my preaching. Now let's go see well, how we are actually dealing with uh, how this, uh, this, uh, the, uh, the, the subject is, is uh, actually handled. This is a flex subject. We call it flex. Anybody knows what is a flex subject? You can come with me at, or be at your home and join online. Not for the lab, lab is in person, a lecture. Uh, what I strongly recommend to come. You can sit at home if you feel sick that day or you drank too much the night before and you want to just sleep a little more, I understand that. But, but to um, constantly not come and lose that presence in class, it's not going to work in my opinion. Uh, Human beings are social animals. We don't function properly solo. Go for a coffee and come back, and then you see you lost half of the stuff. As you see, and it probably your friends told you or something, I record all my sessions. So I record, I've recorded all my sessions as long as I can remember. So if you go on YouTube, Google Fardad, and I don't know, OP244, OP345, or IPC144, hundreds of lectures and playlists are going to come up. <clears throat> so, um, what I'm, if you go through all those playlists, you're going to see through a couple of things are missing. And that's going to happen. The battery of the microphone is going to go back. The connection is going to go the computer. Things like that. And then that causes problems. So be aware of that and uh, um, understand that things may go wrong and the recordings may fail or the microphone go back. Things if stuff like that happens, we might not have to worry. So don't worry about it. How do we act? We click on launch. And, oh, this is, oh, yeah, so it's ready. I'm just going to say join the session. And this is very important. I do not want people to come and listen only. If you are coming and listen only, just don't. Watch the recording later. Listen only doesn't tell me that you're there. It just it shows me that you're just logged in and you're gone, okay? Um, and you need to come in with a microphone. You have to have a microphone. Um, Go get one from Dollar Store if you want to. Okay? You need to have a microphone. Headset is better, but microphone. And you log in and you click on allow. And then one, two, three, three. Hello? 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 I can hear I myself. Can hear myself. That, means that, that means everything's working. working. If you, if don't, you do don't do that, that, if you don't do that, you won't be able to, uh, I won't be able to hear you. It's, it's, it's not guaranteed that the microphone is set properly, so you should use your own echo. No, that's good. No, no, no. I allow everybody. So that's new, actually. Then, oh, there we go. So yeah. So. That, so people join like this, and please don't join with audio now. I'll explain why, okay? Um, 
if you are at the same place with your friend and joining together, you have to have a headset. You cannot let the audio come out of the uh, speakers because one computer will pick up the feedback of the other one and we're going to hear loud echoes and uh, whistling mic uh, uh, speakers uh, going on. We don't do that. See, uh, the way that the WebRTC is designed is that it cancels its own feedback. It knows that it's generating it, and therefore it cancels it. When two computers are side by side, it doesn't know that audio is coming from itself, so it receives an access, and that loop happens over and over, and you know what happens. Right? And then there's a loop with the addition to the audio, and it goes more and more. And then after we're done, we are done with the session. We end and we go out. The session is recorded mostly. Uh, we always record it, so we start. Please let me know. It means the battery is going out. <laughs> uh, we don't want to lose the, um, the audio halfway through. Anyways, uh, I'm going to end the meeting for everyone. And that's going to be uh, our, our big blue button session. Oh, I closed everything. Did I? No, I did not. Next thing, I do this always at the beginning of the class, and I'm going to do it right now. We are on the land of the First Nation of Canada, and we always have to acknowledge uh, the prices they paid for us to actually be here. Okay? Therefore, this got probably other profs are that for you, but um, this is not just something we say that I want to do because I have to. Uh, I mentioned my people. a little 45 minutes research and go through what they have gone through and see that um, this is important. And that's our acknowledgement. Study notes. Uh, all the things that you want to study is on the OER, so you can actually click over here, and exactly like OP244, everything's there for you to see. The book and everything's there. We good down to this point? OK. Sleep already? No? Are you awake? Because I see he's losing out. Look. do that for OP244 a few times at the beginning of the semester, and I just have the project ready and I open it. So I, I code live, which essentially means I actually program while I'm teaching, okay? So I'm gonna, uh, what you will see is that every time, uh, so now for, for example, today is the first session of, on September 4th, right? So I'm going to go to the clone of my repository on this computer. And here I'm going to create one ZFDB. And ZFDB, I'm going to select the folder. I'm going to make sure that I check that 
place the solution project in the same directory, and I create a solution. I, in my solution, I have one uh, uh, project only. I'm going to add uh, an EDM, each of the RG.cpp. And in here, I'll say uh, this SPD. And, and return zero, and I'm going to say C out. Hello, P345ZBB. Compile and run it to see if everything works. Three days later, it runs and compiles, so we know our program compiles. And as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to go to the directory of the project. So you can to do it quickly if you don't want to browse. You just right click and you go to open folder in File Explorer. And then I'm going to go one up, maybe two up, right click over here. Because this file is new, I'm going to add this to my repository on my computer. So it's all added. And after adding all these things, I'll commit it. You can do it in one shot with commit with Tortoise Git. It's on the videos that you have seen. And here I'm going to say uh, hello ZDB. And as soon as I do this, this is going to go on GitHub. And you will see that if I uh, refresh this one. Be out of all the garbage files that I have in here, when you look at it, all the stuff that I have over here. Sorry, other things are opening over here. I just want to close them. And let me take that audio off the thing. It's making crazy noises. I'm going to put it on my computer. There you go. All right. So, yeah, as I was saying, there are several things over here, but when you look at actually the repository, the only things that are in the repository are what's needed to reopen the solution. That's what happens with a file called that git ignore in, in uh, your repository that tells you git that ignore unnecessary files. We'll go to it in a second. I'll explain briefly what git is. Workshop zero that I'm going to talk about is this one. From me regarding workshop zero, right? So you have by the end of the week, you can, right? So let's do it. Um, and and uh, we'll see what happens. So, okay, so that's that. So that's in class notes. Everything's going to be there. Uh, the addenda for OP3, make sure you go through it carefully and understand exactly how things are set and, and done. Um, important. Office hour. I keep my schedule on Microsoft Teams updated, which means the times that I'm free, you will know. All you need to do is to book an appointment and see me anytime you want. Or you need to, what I called respecting the dot. Which is this dot. You see that? When it's green like that, it means you can call me. You don't even know, for that, can I call you? No, just call me. It doesn't matter. Either I'm there to pick it up, pick it up or I'm not there. I'm going to see I have a missed call. I'll call you back. Or I see it a day later, and I'm going to say you called me. What was the problem? Okay, something like that. If you see it's yellow, it means I'm away, or I'm, I'm going to be right back. You can call me. Yellow, green, good. You can call me. Anything other than that, you cannot call me. Okay? He's either I'm busy, off office, or I don't want to talk to you the entire, whatever, okay? So this is wrong for now. to be or whatever. So manually, I'm going to do it right now so I don't get a call from anyone. Um, busy. There we go. want to 
talk to you. I want, like if you call me and I'm not there and you want to make sure that you can uh, uh, kind of get a hold of me, just book an appointment. And booking an appointment is explained how it's done in the repo that I'm going to, in the study notes that, I, that I'm going to tell you. Uh, so um, uh, I actually put a video over there. Uh, we had in IPC 144, we had the lab monitor, we did a pretend. So we had this computer over there. I have my computer over there. You actually booked an, uh, 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 an appointment, and I actually uh, demonstrated how it's done. And you need to do that, if, uh, which means you need to use scheduling assistant. Scheduling assistant, and they add me, or if you feel that at the same time want to meet, uh, you can add all the conditions that shows which ones are uh, like what are the available times for everyone, and uh, we can uh, then have a successful uh, meeting request. And uh, make sure when you are requesting a meeting, it's not for five minutes from now, okay? My response time, based on the addendum, is 48 hours. I'm not saying have the meetings for 48 hours from current time. You can put it for next day. Most likely, I will see it, and I'm going to respond to it, OK? But 48 hours is something that I can manage my time and the things that I have to do, OK? So that's that. Um, I have a phone number posted uh, that you can call with phone, and this is the phone number. You see that? That's the phone number. That, that's essentially when you call me, that's email is. Okay? So that's kind of uh, my number. You can call it uh, at any time. At at any time, because you, can, you can't see the dot. But if I'm not available, then I'm not going to answer. You're going to see a message coming up. That's that. For workshops, for quizzes, and these two. Fusing what you have in test one, you multiply it by thirty thirty out of seventy. Then you get test number two percentage, you multiply it by forty out of seventy. The sum of two should be more than fifty percent. That's one of the conditions of passing the subject. Okay? So passing a subject is the weighted average of tests one and two and the average of the total average of the subject is 50%. And that's a pass. Clear? Very easy, simple. Because the boarding over there is a little bit confusing. Uh, the only thing that, 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 that counts is this. And 79.95 is B plus. It's not A. And don't tell me. Can I have that 0.5 percent? So how can I have that 5 percent, 0.5 percent to get an A? The answer is no. Why? Because once I did that, I used to go through and 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 talk about all these things, and 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 and. Uh, I'm not going to do that anymore. That was a bad thing that happened to me, and I don't want to do that. And that was years ago. And since then, I said, whatever is the calculation, that's the mark. Because you have boundaries everywhere, right? Like if I say you are 79, I'll make you a 80. Then you're going to say, I'm just 88.99. That's 79. So it goes, it's like a dominoes effect. I don't want that. Okay, but the good news is that all these marks are overviewed. In, in the promotion meeting. So in a promotion meeting, um, somebody looks at all the marks and sees AAA and B plus. And I gave you the part that this student has A 
To that you have to argue more to say I didn't add it it was the promotion meeting go talk to them okay that's that so so uh, the timing of the things that are being done are here I know you cannot read it but open the, the thing and take a look at it it says exactly what it is I put a kind of bigger version of timing in weekly schedule if you uh, and I'll show it later on to you the GitHub organization is the organization that you had for 244. It's the same thing for 345, but it's uh, OP3. You, you know what the path is. You click on the workshops are going to be there. My notes are going to be there. The history of my work is not there, unlike OP244. Because I leave OP244, I put everything over there and I don't share everything. But here in 345, once some, something happened about the way I teach that. Did something and I took everything down. It is in my own private repository. So if you go github.com slash fardat, you'll see my repository. One of them is just so my name was available. So actually my ID on GitHub is Fardat, F-A-R-D-A-T. So you can go github.com slash Fardat and it comes up, which brings up into Workshop Zero. Uh, how many of you have done Workshop Zero already, either last semester or now? You didn't do it? You did? Okay, so why you're not doing saying anything? I know these three guys and they're sitting like that. Okay, so... Um, uh, the ID that you are choosing, anything I'm talking about internet, anything that you're dealing with internet, please be careful. It's uh, the internet never forgets. I always give this example, a cat killer is not a good uh, ID. Because 10 years from now when you're, I don't know, manager of some team, some company, you don't, you don't want you, don't want some big up platforms like cat killer. You don't want that, okay? So do go to Makes sense. And think at, look at yourself as a 45, 50 year old person in some company doing some respectful work. In their forehead, what to do with it. So, <laughs> so, yeah, keep, 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 in, keep in mind, it's not a tattoo, you cannot remove it. <laughs> Internet never forgets, ever. That awful picture that you posted once on Instagram, it's going to be there for you when you are running for Prime Minister of Canada. Okay, so, I don't know, yeah, something like that. What I'm saying is that, you've seen it, right? Trudeau with a, okay, <laughs> anyways. So... This how-to videos for CC plus course objects is exactly your workshop zero without the last step. That is adding me as a contributor, as a collaborator to a private repository of yours. So I put that one so all students can see it. If they choose, they can actually use it and set up their computers. Subject online stuff goes to the, goes to the school website. Remember, addendum, by definition, addendum supersedes that. So, supersedes 
what you have over there. Weekly schedule is what I created to kind of <clears throat> give you a more visible <clears throat> and easy way to go through the topics that we have. <clears throat> so it's exactly what you have in addendum, but you can click on it and actually go to the topic. Okay, so week one is this, two, three, and we keep going like that. And uh, quizzes are done here, workshops are done then. What is the percentage of each? They're all reflected over here. I hope you can see it from there, from the corner of your eye on a sidewise screen. But yeah, are we good now to this point? All right. This is all we're going to do today, by the way. This session probably is going to end early today. I'm not going to teach anything. I want you to do a workshop here and everything, and then uh, it's going to start next day. Uh, the semester ends in an awkward way this semester, which means that uh, it, it ends halfway through the week. So we start at 11 and the week ends, and that's a Wednesday. And what day is this? It's Wednesday, right? Four class. So uh, you have your uh, uh, final test on the very last day of the semester. If some miracle happens and we finish everything and we are ready, I may do it a week early. So you are not jam packed with tests and exams and stuff like that. But if I've said if a miracle happens, okay. So so keep that in mind and. Because last day of the semester is a little tricky, if suddenly we have power down and things like that and uh, things don't work and we can't do the test, then it's very difficult to actually put a, a makeup session for that. So it's a good idea to have it. We'll see. Um, that's that. Your quizzes are going to be posted over here. The, the, every quiz, uh, like the answer, the, the quiz. If, the, if I showed you what the quiz is. So the quiz will consist of multiple choices, fill in the blanks for concept stuff, but it will contain programming too. The programming that you're going to do in the quiz will be something very, very, very short, which is essentially I'll give you a class and I'm going to say write the move constructor for this or write the move assignment for this. Okay? If you don't know what it is, you'll learn. Don't worry. Okay. Rule of three, rule of three, just look at this. Rule of three is rule of five in, in OP345, not rule of three. What is rule of three? Rule yeah, of the three. microphone. <laughs> uh, if I remember correctly, it's a uh, uh, yeah, copy assignment, uh, then uh, constructor, then, no, no, copy constructor, copy assignment, and destructor. Destructor, I said, thank you, Rudolf. Now you can give the microphone thank to the. <laughs> <laughs> it was a collaborative. Yeah. So you give the microphone. Now you can Now. Yeah, I build up on questions that I go through. And if you see that thing is going more than three times, and oh, sorry, you can actually say pass. If you're not in a mood or if you don't, don't know the answer, you simply say pass. You pass it to the next person. If three people pass it, you can come to rescue. But never, ever jump halfway through and answer the question, OK? Let people think, OK? That if somebody is delaying the answer, you have no idea such a, what a good result that has. Because everybody's trying to say the answer in their brain. It's, it's an amazing tool to 
Commit your knowledge into long-term memory. So don't rush it. Let's challenge the answer. Like that, we're going to learn more. Um, yeah. So that's that. Student psychology. One of the things that kind of keeps my attention is that um, many students fail to study and come to class and attend because they're ashamed of making a mistake. So I just want to figure out in what you can make a mistake if you are a person who doesn't make a mistake. Why are you hell you're here? If you know everything and you are not making a mistake, why you're here? You're students. You're supposed to make this. Your job and business is to make a mistake and fix it and learn through that. So please make a mistake. When I ask you a question, give me the wrong answer so the next person can correct it and we can reach to a conclusion. I want you to make a mistake. The more mistake you make, the more you are my favorite student. I'm telling you, but if you participate and if you actually take part in this challenge, I love you. But if you just, uh, you know, that's not the problem. That's not the problem, okay? So, bring me up to live coding. I do live coding over here. And you're going to see me making some very good mistakes, okay? Some mistakes I want to sit together and try to find out how, what did I do? I tell it doesn't work. The damn thing doesn't compile. It doesn't give my. I challenge myself. And when I make those mistakes, sometimes I can't fix it here. I'm going to take it home and I'm going to find out what was wrong. And then you see, let us see a post on uh, that Microsoft Teams say, hey, I fixed the problem in class. This is the problem, and that was the problem I made, and this is the solution for it. Now go pull the repository. Thumbs. So you'll see. I, I keep throwing uh, buzzwords like pull the repository, push the repository, commit the things. I'll explain what these things are, and we'll go through it uh, in a short time. So midterm test, final test, documents, and that's not important the rest of them. Uh, uh, notes, please come down over here and take the time. If you are my OP244 students, you've already seen this and you've dealt with it. If you are new to my class, please go to that OP345 NBD notes and read these. These are important. Mac users. Pictures of Taylor Swift all over the place. Huh? Yeah, so, yeah, Swifties. Can you believe it? Anyway, so, so we had a Swiftie in my OP244 class last time. She's not here now. I, didn't, I, I guess she didn't take a break for, in summer. But anyways, so, yeah. So, uh, I, um, if you have a problem with your code, I'll try to fix it. But if you have problems, hardware problem with your Mac or uh, Mac-related software problem, I'm not good at it. Uh, I'm supposed to teach you C++ not to do hardware problem fix. I'll do my best. I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm not going to do it. I will do I will try to do it. I'm going to ask my 11-year-old, like, how do you create an SSH <laughs> key for? But anyways, what I'm saying is that um, I strongly suggest if your computer is not one of those mobile CPUs, or sorry, if your uh, Mac is not one of those mobile CPUs, you can actually install VMware on it. The, those CPUs have M something. I think those are
knows what a virtual machine. Go ahead. Ah, hey, microphone. One thing, one thing. I'm sorry I'm interrupting you. I know you've got to say, if you have a microphone, everybody has to hear you on the, on the recording. But I want everybody to use their opera voice when they're answering the question. Loud! Be very loud so people can hear you. Go ahead. Be outspoken. <laughs> yeah, so a virtual machine um, is like, I guess when you have one OS, for example, you have Windows, and then you could use a program like VirtualBox um, to run another OS on your um, on your machine, but like it doesn't affect the actual OS that is bare metal on your machine. No? So it used to be boot camp where you essentially divided your computer in two so you could boot your computer into different operating system. After they changed, I'm an old man, they used to have certain CPUs, then they changed to Intel. After that, the boot camp came through. Um, when that happened, it could be divided in two. But virtual machine is not like that. Virtual machine essentially creates one window as a different computer. So that when the, it literally boots up as a regular computer on your pro, on, I cannot run it right now because I didn't use this computer for a long time. If I do it, probably it's going to crash the computer and the record. But let, let's do it. Um, but not the fact that it, it runs the, the recording. So what I'm saying is that when you create it, like in some virtual machine like VMware, There you go. So that's the thing. So I myself, like I have like five, six different virtual machines on my desktop at home. One of them is for my demos that I record for students. I don't want to start installing stuff on my computer. I install it on that virtual machine. If it breaks down the thing, it, I just throw it away and create another one. It's a software. It's, it's a file on your computer. Who cares? Right? And it, it is literally a computer in, in the belly of your computer. Now, uh, so you can do anything you want. It's completely separate from the uh, uh, OS that you install on your hardware. And the good thing is that you can actually assign, use all the resources of your computer. So it's, it could be extremely fast. If you are using your Mac and you want your Windows to be quick, you can actually do that. It actually the Mac for VM will be fast. The good thing is that you shut down the VM, your Mac goes to your original self. Or you can ask it to use all the Nothing else. Because you can do all your emailing and stuff and all the things that you're doing, word processing on your Mac. Okay, so it is a very good idea if you're a Mac user and you're not comfortable with writing code on Mac, do that. Um, one of the things that uh, I always tell to my students is that not to take sides. If it was me, I would only use Linux. Beautiful operating system. Smooth, fast, everything's perfect in it. But I'm using Windows. Oh, Fedo, you use Fedora. Oh, so, yeah, Fedora is, a, Fedora is essentially the open source version of Red Hat. Red Hat is Fedora. Basically. 
You can use Ubuntu. You can use, okay, one is called Mint. It depends, different types of flavors. It's all open source, right? Uh, it's amazing. You can do anything you want, and you can put a virtual machine on it and put Windows on it if you want, or vice versa, okay? So we are doing everything, everything at Seneca is Microsoft based, as you could see. Things. On the, in, uh, I told you exactly what it is. You click over here, you're going to go to the team. This is the video that I said, how to book an appointment. You click on this one, it brings up the video from five, four years ago, I don't know, when I was teaching IPC, how to book an appointment on Teams. All the videos that are see are from a year or two ago. So when you click, you may see the buttons moved around on your software a little, like your Visual Studio has is the latest update and it has a little thing that doesn't help, but the gist of the information is the same. Just walk through it and if you have any problem, let me know. Anything you do on your Mac, it's the exact same thing that you do on your Fedora, it's the exact same thing it's exactly the same thing that you do on Matrix. They are all Unix-based operating systems. You can do all the Git stuff that I'm doing in command line, no problem. Okay, so that's that one. When everything is done, then we'll talk about Hmm. Uh, yes, so the question was, test one uh, includes uh, whatever. Any test that you see, actually, very good question, thank you. Unlike how some of my colleagues did previous semesters, that their quiz tests what is about to come instead of what is taught, I don't do that. Any test that you have focuses on the latest material beforehand and reuses everything from IPC 144. I cannot tell you, okay, I'm asking you have your test on 4345, uh, they're not going to be forging it because it was in IPC. I can't do that. <laughs> so you'll see if you do, but they focus on the latest material. So that's that. you have practiced on, okay, at times in the number of workshops and tasks were reduced, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, how, how did you make sure that we had the same amount of practice? Because that practice is very important, right? Okay, there, on the, uh, if, uh, first of all, I do programming life. Anything that I write and it's on the week, you take it home, you reversion it, you add to it, you enhance it, that's your practice every day. So you have daily practices on everything that I teach, okay? On top of that, you are doing other stuff. For OB244, what I did is that now they have workshop one, there is no DIY. DIY is open for practice. Okay, so that's how we change the scope. And, and they're very simple. So, so we are running that for tenants of IPC. But as we go higher, the hand holding. So, how do we practice? Take a look at the topic. Everybody loves ChatGPT. Go to ChatGPT and say, right.
I'm telling you, it's an amazing time. Use AI. I think AI is kind of like a gun. I'm so sorry to tell you that. Which means you can use it for evil or you can use it for good. You can shoot yourself with the gun or you can go haunting and feed your family. Okay? They're two different things. So chat GPT is like that. Use it for your practices to see if you have done something correctly or not. Get guidance. Don't tell me answer it and copy and paste it. You know that every single thing that ChatGPT creates is easily detected to see if it's done with AI. Right? Just go look at it. It's actually a program. You give it something and it tells you which AI did it. Not as AI, which one. Okay, so be careful. Anyways, so that's what that's that. So there are many ways. Now you're you're grown ups. Uh, find a way to practice and share your practices on uh, the Questions? <clears throat> Question. No? No? Time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? Suggestions? Objections? Are we good? All right. Any question one? Any question two? So, let's go for a break for five minutes and come back, and then we're going to uh, talk about. Uh, Get a little very quickly to tell you what it is, the history of it, and then uh, so I give you some incentive to actually learn it, go through what you do. Okay, another thing that I want to say I said it's very consistent. First light is breaking, please let me know. Another thing is that when I talk, please remind me to resume because I forget to resume, go on pause, and then the rest of the video report. So please remind me to resume. See you in five. So, talking about hello. So, talking about uh, Git and uh, Git repository and things like that. I, I just want to point a few things out, and I see we had some casualties of of break because I gave break and suddenly. We only, oh, free food. They had free food downstairs. Oh. I think that happened. They are waiting for shawarma. Because <laughs> I was on the elevator coming up and said, Did you have shawarma? Free shawarma down there? Now, I know. So if you see that coming, it's like, <laughs> it means. All right. So, long time ago in the galaxy, far, far away, it was the sky. So, uh, yeah, so long time ago, uh, somebody got fed up with all this expensive operating systems and things like that and wrote an operating system, and literally in his basement, on his own computer. His name was Linus Torvald, and he is actually, he's, he's, a, he's, a amazing, he's an amazing guy. He, he created Linux and um, made it open source, provided source for everyone. It suddenly grew like an explosion. And now my car runs on Linux. I'm serious. And like there are things like that that you cannot believe that like anything that you think about somehow goes down. So because it makes it open source, who knows what is open source? Actually, because the microphone is open source. You have a microphone, right? But you know what is open source? Open source. You know what open source is? As far as I know, uh, open source is like uh, open source. 
Yeah, so could, could I give you So when we say so when we say contributes, it means uh, I have a source code that is doing something, and there are ten different people have suggestions that they want to add features to this source code. How can that work? You are writing a program by yourself, and you make a boo boo, and 15 minutes later you don't remember how did you do that, and you have to go back and fix it. So that doesn't make sense. When ten people are working on the same source code, how can we manage? the changes they are doing. So as he did that, uh, tried to manage these stuff, the, all these contributions that were coming in, uh, he saw that it's not going to work out. We have to find a way to be able to manage all the things that are coming in, be able to trace all the changes that are happening to our project. Not necessarily the source, but anything. Anything that's happening in the project something more. All these changes are made and sometimes these changes trick somebody's putting drywalls. I cannot tell them, shoo, everybody come in. I have to organize who's coming in and who's going out and branch it. Then I say, OK, the person who's doing electrical needs to wait for the, uh, so the person who's doing the drywalls need to wait for the electrical to do the electric so then they can put the walls on. And things like that. Or the, if somebody's doing the, the floor, it has to be done before the painting is done because yeah, they have to do the baseboard. Stuff like that. I don't know. I'm not, the, I'm not in construction. I'm just making things up. But at the end, they all come back together, and you have a house that you can live in. Uh, that happens with software. Software has special features, and this had a So we wrote Git. Git is a program whose job is to keep track of changes by several people, several entities at the same time, and it can, as as, as much as it can, it tries to make the emergence. <laughs> in a distributed if distributed way. What it means, give me a second. Dry mouth. <clears throat> am I recording? Yes, I am recording. So, so you download Git and you install it on your computer. It's a fully functional program that can do everything Git does on your computer. Okay? What do you do with Git? You create a folder. You tell to Git this folder is a repository. So what is a repository? What is a folder? What is a folder? A folder is... Now sometimes my questions are so simple, you don't know how to ask You don't know? You can simply say pass and pass it to the next person. What is a folder? Folder is a, if you, if you don't know the answer, I know when you hear the answer, you say, of course. But, but if you don't know, you can simply pass it to the lady behind you. I think uh, it's like, we can say it's a place where we can put together our files and everything that we You can we organize need. your files in. So yeah. it holds your files. 
And what do you call that? A folder. Yes, but a folder. When you're on Linux, you create a folder or you create a? Repository is a folder under the guise of Git. Repository is essentially you tell to the to Git, hey Git, could you consider this folder as a repository? That's a, that's a Git repository. Folder is called directory. <laughs> ah, see, that I told you, it's a directory. this directory, okay? Now you can organize it yourself and try to keep track of the changes. How do you usually do it? You, you put stuff in it and then you say, oh, okay, let me make a copy out of it just in case. So you create an OP244-1 directory that is a copy of this one. And then you do your work and then after that, somehow you have to figure out which files are needed and which files are not. And then after five copies of this thing, you don't know which one was the assignment that you have done, which one is the best one, which one. So everything gets messed up. We don't do that. We create the folder on our computers. We call that OP244, and we tell to the Git program that we install. Repository, take care of it. Git marks it as a repository, and as of that moment, anything you put inside this folder, you can take, tell Git to supervise it. So when you create a folder and you put files in it, Git will not do anything with those files until, unless you tell to Git. of the git repository with a command called commit. So at any moment when you say commit, anything that is added will, be a, will go under supervision, and anything that a change was, was made on it, the changes will be, will be registered under the, the snapshot that you take. Any commit that you do is a moment of time you can come back to later on. So you're working, and your husband, your wife, your mother, your sister calls you, come oh, help, or come for dinner. You simply say, commit, go to OK? You come back. You do your work, and yada, yada, yada. Three days later, you say, oops, I made a mistake. Something was doing something to me. My sister called me for dinner. What can I do? Nothing. You simply go to that commission. Okay. Commit. So these are the two things you do it on your own computer. Okay, of course you have remove. You can remove the files you don't want from the repository. You can create a file called dot git ignore in the root of your repository, which means the root of your directory. And you put over there what needs to be ignored. So when you are actually committing and you're telling to git add everything, git will add everything ignoring what is not supposed to be added. And therefore, you don't have garbage kept track of. Like all the executables that are made out of my source code, what do I need? I can always create my executables by recompiling. What do I need? keep track of So, that's one part. Now, I said this is two users. What do I mean by that? One Git repository can get loaded to another thing. The computer that my friend has over here has programming it from his computer.
this to that and that to this. A wise company called GitHub said, people are going to need a master repository to keep track of everything. And they call it upstream, you know? When fish go back, swim upstream, that's what they call it. They put something that is source of everything. And they can put those main repositories on my servers so they never get lost. That's why they call, they call it the GitHub. GitHub is essentially a big farm, a big cluster of servers where people put their Git repository over there and they clone it on their own computer. Now, add, commit, all these stuff can happen both and both. But there are two commands in Git that deal with two cloned repositories, which where they can send all the changes from this one to other one. Getting something from your computer. What do you call it? Download. Get the changes. That's why you have a repository that are gigabytes. And when you pull, it only pulls 2K, because the difference between the two is only 2K. OK? And a smart upload is called push, where you push information from your local depository upstream. What are you doing in Workshop Zero? In Workshop Zero, you are learning this basic commands that I told you. Man, I, next time, instead of coffee, I have to bring water. I keep drinking it, and it dehydrates me more. OK. So in Workshop Zero, first, I am teaching you to install. I'm asking you to install Visual Studio and all the stuff that you have. Then at, at, and next, I ask you to install Git. Git is the one that I told you. You install that one, you don't need anything else. So what is Tortoise Git that I asked you to install on your Windows? Because I don't want to teach you Git. I want to teach you C++. I don't want Git to stand in a way. Every right click on a folder that a repository, you go on a menu and say pull. It pulls everything from its upstream. OK? So that's what it's going to do. So that's why I asked you to install Tortoise Git. All those people who have Macs or they are comfortable with Linux, do command line. You can do it or get Windows, OK? One of these. It's your choice. But it's not that difficult. I usually do command line myself, too, like the things that, and you can write scripts and things. Anyways, so that's Tortoise Git. Now, you are on GitHub. And your computer is here. If everybody can go clone your stuff, then what the heck? Of course, you want to do some stuff open source. You want people to clone your stuff. You want them to actually work on your work on your repository. That's fine. Well, we can't do that. We are students. If you put anything public, it's considered plagiarism. If I see your repository is public, it's literally plagiarism because people can copy from you, right? So you cannot make your schoolwork public. So you need a private repository. If it's a private repository, what is a key paired with? A key slot. You put your key, you open the door, correct? Are we okay with this? Many people can have this key, but the door that is getting open is one, right? That is a private key. This is a public key. That's what they call it. So when I'm saying create an SSH key and, and create a private key and install the private key on GitHub or create a, whatever. So if I tell you do these stuff, I'm essentially telling you to create a lock for your repository, only your key can open. 
Okay? Therefore, you install that on your computer. Because of that, then when you are pushing and pulling, every single time you don't have to enter, you just write the password and then go yourself to enter the key and you won't push. You have the key, you push it as soon as you push. First, you set the key, GitHub receives the key. Oh, it matches. Then it passes the thing, you're good. Everything goes off. Seamless. Last thing in workshop zero is for you to create your private repository. So your private repository should be ideally on your computer, the directory in which you're going to do your OP345 work. Don't be sloppy. Don't do your work on a separate directory and put it in a repository and push it. That's just, I'm so sorry to put this on, to say this, that's just plain stupid. That's that's essentially the whole purpose of GitHub, not to do that. So you create an open source for repo on your computer. You have a master on GitHub. You are working there. Anything you do, you organize it there. If you want to do something to do rough work, create a directory, a folder called rough work inside your OP24 repository. If you want to do uh, practice, create a directory called practice. If you want to have your workshops in there, create a directory called workshops. And keep doing stuff and do... You have everything on a master. You go to home, and you simply pull, all the changes come. You may get conflicts every now and then. If you have problem, I'll, I'll tell you how actually how to fix your conflicts using Tortoise. I'm not going to do command line because that's difficult. Okay? Nobody knows Git um, except Linus Torvald. If somebody tells me I know Git upside down, they are lying. It's a very, it's a huge, it's a it's, a, it's an extremely complicated tool that has different stages. You can use it as a, as a beginner, very simply, or you can do crazy stuff with it. Okay? So I, I don't claim that I know Git, but the, I guarantee one thing for you. When you are, go, and, I, and I'm telling you I guarantee one thing because many, many, many students, I lost count, send me thank you letters because they said I got I have a story. Why? Nobody reads your resumes. Sorry. On GitHub means exactly that. When they Google your name and it comes up GitHub, this is the person. Immediately, well, they're going to look at your repository. They see you have some C++ program there. Put all the things that you're proud of open. OK? Of course, if it's a schoolwork, modify it. Do it something so it's not, it's not schoolwork. You can do that. That's practice that you were asking for, right? Do that and say, this is the code that I have done that does this. This is the code. That, so put your sample codes up there. And create projects, everyday problems that you have, write projects for them. And do it and put it in there. One day, when you are getting, when you're actually going someplace to get hired, they see you have the, or you, have, you are visible on internet and you have Git, you are the person who's flagged to get the, get the interview. Believe me on that, okay? So it's very important to do so. And your last step of workshop zero is to make that private repository that you practice for all three, four, four. Yeah. 
here with my SSH key to GitHub, I can go to any repository that I have access on it over there, including yours. I'll go to your repository, clone everything on my computer. You call me, I open it up, share my screen with, my, with your stuff on my computer, and I ask you, what do you need help with? You say this and that. I'll, do, I'll open it up, fix it, add comments, commit, and push. You pull on your computer, you diff the two. Diff is another command of git, git that you can see the difference between two files. You diff the previous version and the current version, you see exactly how I fixed it. You reflect on it, and back. Okay, so no more sending source code that please do not take a sidewalk image, take it with your cell phone from your screen telling my my program doesn't work. It's an insult to my intelligence and yours. Take a picture. goes wrong with your code, you simply say, this is my code. I compile, I'm going to have this error code in front of my face instead of that ugly picture that you took. Okay? So please don't do that. Okay? You are way high in the, uh, in, the in, in, in computer programming knowledge. And that was essentially Git. Okay? So please uh, do workshop zero. Uh, let me know if there's anything wrong with uh, uh, setting it up. I'm expecting to get invitations from Git, okay, to, to have access to your repository and use that repository to do your work. And if there's any conflict, you see the conflict happen, okay? <clears throat> if you see any conflict happen, the cheesiest way to fix it is to call me and I'll let you know. I'm not going to tell you now. First do the workshop, then I'll tell you how. You know what a conflict is? is when you change the one file from two different places and you forget to commit one of them. In the main repository, without pulling you try to change it. So the golden rule of Git, my watch is telling me I'm exercising. <laughs> yeah, I want to see how time is it. Uh, yeah, we have, we have four minutes. This is the, you haven't done the workshop, I just want you to remember this. This is the golden rule of net not getting a conflict. Obsessively do this. At any moment when you want to start working on your repository, before you do anything, pull it. Like this, something's never happened. When you're done, commit and push. Okay? So you come to your computer, when it's not working on something, first you pull, do whatever you are doing, commit and push. If you're doing something, you have to extend, commit and push in one shot. So you can do that. Oh, Microsoft Teams, please do not use the... Thank you. Are we good? Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? He told me when somebody's asking a question, repeat the question so we know on thing. That was a good, uh, actually, suggestion. So remind me of that, too. When somebody asks a question, I have to repeat the question so it actually goes over there. Uh, any question one? Any questions two? So have a good day. And you know what's going to happen? People are going to come over here with their computers. Yeah. So <laughs>